Welcome to our review on specific latent heat. First thing then, just a little recap of what you've done, hopefully much lower down the school, is the very top there we can see that we've got those three particle diagrams. So on the far left we have a solid where the particles are all arranged in nice neat rows, all nicely close together, all touching. The middle diagram you can see the liquid, so they're no longer in those neat rows, but they are all still touching each other, we don't have big spaces between them. And then finally on the far right, the gas where all the particles are spaced out. Now the changes of state that we will see between a solid and a liquid is going to be melting, liquid to a gas is evaporating, gas to liquid is going to be condensing, and finally a liquid to a solid is going to be freezing. So what we actually find is that when we heat a solid, the temperature is going to rise steadily until it reaches the melting point. Now once we reach that melting point, what we actually find is the temperature remains constant while the solid is actually undergoing the process of melting. So what we find is the reason behind that is that all of the energy that we're putting into it at this point is being used to break into molecular bonds. So as opposed to using the energy that's heating it up to actually increase the temperature, then the energy that's going into that substance is just going to be breaking the intermolecular bonds. So the temperature stays the same. Once it's all melted, then the temperature is going to continue to rise at that constant rate until we reach the boiling point. And again, here we're going to see that leveling off of the temperature and it stays the same. And that's because all of the energy we're putting into it is being used to break the intermolecular bonds once more. So what we find is that at any point that we see a plateau or a flat point on the graph where we're looking at temperature increases, that's down to the fact that the energy being put in is being used to break intermolecular bonds. So the kind of graph we may well see is one like this. So if you have a look at the bottom left of the graph first of all, then we can see there's that steady increase in temperature from minus 18 to zero. So that's where the ice is warming up. As it gets to zero, which is obviously that melting point, then all of the energy going into it is being used to break the intermolecular bonds, so the ice is melting, but the temperature stays at zero. Then once all of those bonds have been broken, the energy is used to again increase the temperature of the water, so we get that steady increase, and then when we get to 100, that's obviously the boiling point, so what we see is again the temperature levels off and stays constant at 100, and that's because all of the energy is breaking the intermolecular bonds between the particles in our water. Once those have been broken, then we see the increase in temperature once more. This is where we come on to see our second calculation of the topic, which is to do with this thing called specific latent heat. Now, when we're talking about the specific latent heat, what we're referring to is the amount of energy needed to change the state of one kilogram of the substance. So by change the state, we mean change it from solid to liquid, liquid to gas, or vice versa. So what we actually find is there are two values associated with this. So we would have the specific latent heat of fusion, which is the energy needed to melt one kilogram of a substance, so to change it from a solid to a liquid, and that's also the same for going from liquid to solid. And also we have the specific latent heat of vaporization, which is the energy needed to boil and evaporate one kilogram of a substance. So that's going from a liquid to a gas and vice versa. So on page two of your exam booklet, you'll find this calculation. So the energy in joules is the specific latent heat measured in joules per kilogram times by the mass in kilograms. Example of a kind of question you might well get then, how much energy is needed to melt two kilograms of ice? The specific latent heat of fusion for water is 334 joules per kilogram. So if we look back to page two, we find our equation, so energy is specific latent heat times mass, and then we substitute in the numbers from our question. So we know the specific latent heat is 334, and the mass is two. So 334 times two gives us our energy of 668 joules. The one thing to bear in mind about this is they're quite likely to give you a table in the question which has got two, three different substances and they will give you the values for the specific latent heat of fusion and the specific latent heat of vaporization for them. So you need to read the question carefully to identify which of those numbers to use.
So do make sure that you remember fusion is the solid to liquid, vaporization liquid to gas.